there's a good number of conversations going on in the public eye right now which are just steeped in science. Global climate change, GMOs, evolution, vaccines, just to name a few. Everybody seemingly wants to get in on these scientific conversations, but few seem to be well-versed enough in the art of scientific conversation to hold up their side of the conversation. There are things which are not taught in high school science courses or freshman-level college courses which go a long way towards aiding this particular side of conversational life. In this video, I will go over three aspects which are vital in order to speak with others about these vital conversations about science. Hello Internet, and welcome to the Science Of using sci-fi and the news to educate people on how science actually works here in the real world. So what constitutes good scientific conversational tact? That's what I'm going to cover today because so many people get it wrong. Now, in this video, I'll refer to many outside sources, so of course I'm going to put them into a supplement, and I'll put the link to the supplement in the dealing with box. The first big point is the use of words. I've covered this in a previous video. Click on my face to watch it. I cover the fact that when people speak about science, slang uses of words are commonly used in place of the scientific uses of these words in scientific conversation. Good examples of this are the word chemical and the word theory. Before you get into a scientific conversation, make sure you know the scientific definitions of the words you're using. And make sure you use those scientific definitions in these conversations and be consistent about it. A considerable number of words obviously have scientific definitions like chemical and theory, but other words do have scientific definitions, but it's not obvious that they do, like, for instance, volatile. So how do you get a good idea about scientific definitions? You could Google it, but you would have a hard time separating between good sources and piss poor sources. You could go to Wikipedia, but you could pretty easily create an account for Wikipedia and edit those entries yourself, so that's not exactly the most reliable source either. So what's the solution to this? The simple answer is textbooks. There are plenty of scientific textbooks from freshman year science classes which are readily available online, and pretty much every definition you'll want to look for will be in those. But then again, the question comes, how do you decide which textbooks will be good and which ones will be bogus? Many universities have their own bookstores, and those bookstores have their own websites, and you can go to those bookstore websites and search for textbooks of classes by course. So let's say you wanted the general chemistry textbook. You go to a university website, go to the bookstore, go to Chem 121, and see what textbook is used, and grab that textbook. The second big thing is scientific claim. There are a few scientific claims that are going around which are not backed up by science. There's no scientific papers which substantiate the claims. Uh, these clips don't reference any scientific papers, nor do they interview any scientists about it. And there's just no reason to believe they have any scientific grounds. Now I know the news can't exactly send to their entire audience scientific papers via the television set, but Every single person who's watching the news has access to the internet. And every single news station has their own website so they can very easily and very readily link to scientific papers in their articles and in their news videos. So before expressing a scientific idea which should have scientific papers backing it up, ask where your source got the information from. Tide goes in, tide goes out. Never miscommunication. You can't explain that. Where's his source? There's a long list of ingredients allowed in beer, stabilizers that are linked to intestinal inflammation, even fish swim bladders. Where is she getting that information from? Uh, that alcohol is healthy for you is when it's organic. So I thought that it stood to reason that tobacco was healthy as well when it was organic. So even though my family has a history of lung cancer and emphysema when they smoke, I figured it was okay if I kicked back and relaxed and had a cigarette, um, as long as it was organic. Where's the data coming from? Any liquor that says it uh, has the word bond in the, on the label means that it's 100 proof. Give me the sources! Whenever you make a scientific claim, 
make sure you can provide that person you're talking to with scientific sources when they ask you for them. And when somebody makes a claim on which you have the urge to call bullshit, ask them for their sources instead. The third main point is understanding. There are plenty of people who seem to not understand the basic science behind the scientific claims they're making. Now this point is a little bit harder to remedy because getting to the point where you understand the science behind the claim is, can get a bit boring. But it is vital for appropriately conversing about scientific concepts. So how does one go about having an underlying understanding of the background science behind scientific ideas? As I've mentioned a few minutes ago, textbooks are readily available freely online. Another big source of understanding is, well, going to class. But none of you really want to go to classes. I'm imagining, anyways. There's an alternative for that, too. Many universities have what is called Open Courseware, or OCW for short. This means that these universities upload audio and video of each and every single lecture for the entire semester of select courses. And these courses range from English to science to music to law and to economics. Pretty much anything you can imagine being in a college course, you can find the OCW somewhere. And in the sciences, this includes chemistry, biology, physics, mathematics, geology, pretty much every single science you can think of. This has helped me a lot in getting my degree in chemistry, and I can imagine it'll help a lot of people increase their understanding of science just a little bit more. And after you go through a couple semesters worth of OCW material, you'll be able to have that understanding of the behind-the-scenes science of the topics that you're talking about in science. This is a good foundation for increasing your ability as well as your satisfaction when conversing about science. There are other points which need to be addressed, which I may talk about in future episodes, but this is the bare-bone foundation from which the other points will have to draw. So subscribe to stay informed, don't forget to like, favorite, and share this video, follow me on social media, links in the description, and as always, until next time, keep learning, keep growing, and keep improving the world around you.